What is the secret of the Mapuche Indians, whom the Spaniards could not conquer, the only Native Americans who succeeded? They themselves called themselves, and call themselves, Mapuche, and in world historiography they are more often commemorated as Arakans. Moreover, this word is taken from the language of the Mapuche themselves, and means something like numerous enemy or serious enemy. True, the original sound is distorted. The Spaniards subordinated the original sounds to their phonetics. One way or another, this nickname shows the respect that this Indian people inspired the conquistadors. The Mapuche lived and live in what is now Chile and Argentina. The people themselves consist of four tribal associations. Until the 18th century, there were three. Each of the associations is divided into tribes, which, in turn, consist of several genera. Each tribe has a leader, and the chief is chosen from among the respected rulers. He does not have special power in peacetime, but in wartime he plays the role of the supreme ruler. Also in the tribes, in case of war, leaders of a lower rank are provided, something like officers. Interestingly, for the most part, these positions are for life, and in the event of disagreement, the boss does not have the right to remove his subordinate. This is possible only as a collegial decision in the event that the chosen one shows cowardice or his actions are recognized as insufficiently effective or deliberately erroneous. Mapuche by the time the Europeans appeared in their area were engaged in irrigated agriculture, cattle breeding. They owned the secret of mining and processing silver and copper. That is, they looked from the outside as a completely settled formation, appreciating stability and tranquility, which in no way corresponded to reality, since in their society the cult of war was encouraged and fueled. True, war for the sake of war was not allowed. Some reason was required, a special legal situation. For example, the lack of women. Then you can go to your neighbor and take away this important resource from him or take revenge for an insult, physical, moral, religious. Now such a legal motivation would not work, because if you wish, you can fit anything under it. But the Iraqans followed a certain moral code that was instilled in children from an early age. And this despite the fact that the people did not have a written language. Their isolated language existed solely as an oral practice. The neighbors of the Arakanians were afraid. Even the Incas once broke their teeth about them. Other local dominant states or unions avoided contacting them, and the Spaniards immediately distinguished them from the general mass. In 1558, the conquerors created a code of laws governing relations between the Spaniards and the Mapuche, according to which the natives even received some rights, and the Spaniards were instructed to treat them without excessive cruelty. Those relations were built on the medieval practice of serfdom. For example, the leader of a tribe was charged with sending every sixth man to mining, and every fifth man to agriculture. At the same time, such workers did not receive a salary, but the Spanish owner was obliged to support them, feed, provide housing. Men under 18 or over 50 did not participate in such calculations, like the rest of the female population. True, it was rather an attempt to share the skin of an unkilled bear, the Arakans resisted fiercely. The first battles showed the superiority of the Spaniards. And what did the Mapuche do? They sharply rejuvenated the command staff of their armed forces which contributed to the growth of the effectiveness of their actions. Among the commanders of the new wave stood out 19-year-old Lautaro. He was elected to a high post because of the experience that he received not quite in battle. He, still 11 years old, in 1544, was captured by the Spaniards and left as a personal servant of the local conquistador Pedro de Valdivia. Lautaro headed the Spaniards, but managed to hide his feelings in the name of long-term prospects. Not being able to question, Lataro observed, analyzed, and drew conclusions. So he learned about the strengths and weaknesses of Spanish tactics. Over time, Lataro was entrusted with the care of the owner's horses. And he not only became an excellent rider, but also studied the methods of taming these animals and caring for them to the subtleties. And, as soon as the young Indian received the knowledge he needed, he fled. True, it turned out to leave the second time. And returning to his fellow tribesmen, Lataro organized something like preparatory courses, in which he shared his knowledge and thoughts about Spanish combat skills, which won untouchable authority in soldier circles, and this at the age of 14, becoming at the age of 19 Maputoke, but, ruler of the people, in fact, a military leader, Lataro reformed his army, he organized a permanent cavalry unit, whose tactics were similar to those of European lancers, since the Spaniards still had an advantage in this type of battle, guerrilla tactics began to be widely used. Well, if it came to open skirmishes, then they tried to fight where the terrain was not at all suitable for large-scale cavalry operations. Over time, the army of Lautaro acquired captured guns and guns, and he organized the Indian analog of the Spanish thirds. In fact, 
the young leader completely adopted the European experience, making small changes in order to adapt it to local conditions. So, invading the central regions of Chile in order to liberate them from the Spaniards, Lataro built a system of fortifications to hold the territories cleared of the Spaniards. Over time, the power of the Indian army of Lataro increased so much that it began to regularly beat the Spaniards in the open field. In terms of troop organization and discipline, they showed results unprecedented for the Indians, thanks to which Lataro managed to create a battle formation that resembled the Spanish thirds. The cavalry protected him on the flanks. Also, the talented Mapuche commander divided the army into four parts, so that three divisions were responsible for the front and flanks, and the fourth was used either as a hasty reserve or as an ambush regiment. Lautaro died in 1557, during the Battle of Matakino, he was ambushed. That did not prevent the Arakans from continuing to exploit the ideas and achievements of their leader, and this is perhaps the main reason why the Spaniards were never able to conquer the Mapuche for 350 years. That is why today Lautaro is honored in his homeland as the greatest hero, he managed to do what other peoples of the New World could not do.